hello. And we are back. And we are back. And we are back. And I hear an echo, so I'm Oh wait, not... that's me. Is it you? It's not me. Because it's often me. Okay. Okay. Looks like it's good. It, it was me. It was me. <laughs> so yeah, so next up for the rest of the day, we have two lessons about an hour long. First is advanced NumPy. So in past years, we've given a basic NumPy lesson about the basics of using NumPy array objects. So since we've already done that, we have the material you can read. We have a video from the previous year. Actually, I should make sure to link that. Um, but we're trying something different and talk going under the hood and looking inside the array object and how it works and why you might need to know how it is. So this is advanced. So if you're new to NumPy, then basically watch and observe. And then if you haven't already, then you can follow the basic material later. And then we have pandas. But with me here are two great co-instructors, um, Marijn van Vlent and Johan Helsvik. Um, and I'll give it to them. So great. Thank you, Richard. Yes, welcome everyone to well, Advanced NumPy, where Johan and I will try to teach you some, some things that, that are not covered in the, the basic NumPy tutorials that you find, but are actually very useful um, when you actually start using NumPy for any type of serious data analysis. Um, and uh, throughout this 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 hour, um, there's three things we want to cover with you. And the, 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 the first is to discuss like why NumPy is fast. Python is quite slow as a programming language. If you try to do any type of serious like data analysis in plain Python, it's actually really slow. But NumPy is really, really fast. And why is that? Um, but NumPy is not always fast. Um, when you actually start using NumPy, you will sometimes encounter points where, where sometimes things are fast and sometimes things are, are way slower than you would expect them to be. Um, and this is not obvious at all in NumPy. So we will, we will try to explain more about that, how that works. Um, and then there, there's a third topic um, that is all about uh, memory management. Um, sometimes NumPy will copy data. Sometimes NumPy will not copy data. It's not always obvious when that actually happens. We will go into that. And this is relevant for when you have like large data arrays. And if you have like a few gigabytes of data loaded into memory, then you really want to know if NumPy is going to make a copy of the data or not. All right. Um, so, well, let's get right into it to the first thing, like, why is NumPy fast? So, Johan, what, maybe, maybe you can tell me, uh, when, I mean, Python is quite slow, but NumPy can be really fast. And, and why is that? What, what do people usually say when, when we ask? Yeah, so, so there are a number of reasons. So NumPy has been designed to be fast. And um, one way to achieve this has been to write the, the kernels of NumPy into C code, which is compiled code. Yeah. Uh, another thing is this that uh, a lot of, of the arithmetics which are performed in NumPy are standardized arithmetics with, as of the form which is contained in mathematical libraries, such as the the BLAS, basic linear algebra library, and, and also more large uh, yeah. packages as, as the Intel math kernel library. And these have been optimized over many decades to perform and be stable on a large variety of uh, hardware. Exactly. So to recap, NumPy is fast because it's implemented in C code. It's it's not in, in uh, written in Python. Um, it's mostly written in C, um, but not any C as we will see. Uh, so yeah. Um, and for this, we have uh, designed the first exercise um, in, this, uh, in this new course. 
Um, so when we say NumPy is fast because it's implemented in C, let's let's put that actually to the test. Um, I have a snippet of C code here. So C is a compiled language um, that is compiles down to, a, to machine instructions. And that's, this is why it's really fast. Um, and this snippet of C code here, uh, it, it generates 10 million random numbers and then adds them all together. So we're adding 10 million random numbers here. Um, and Johan, maybe you can demonstrate uh, what this code actually does. Maybe you can grab, grab my screen. I think you have it all loaded up. So you don't have to, uh, so, so uh, for you, uh, uh, for the students at home, if you have the C compiler at hand, you know how to use it, uh, feel free to uh, to type along with this. Um, if not, um, then just feel free to just uh, watch. Uh, watch this as a demo. Yes, uh, thanks, Marie. So um, we have the, the C code the snippet here. And as usual, there is a copy button here if you would like to copy the code uh, into an editor and compile it. So I have here a thumbnail window. And let's see what I have here. I have here the C source code, speed random C. And uh, then I have the executables. So speed random sum underscore opt. That's my fastest binary. So let's see, so see how this performs. So right here, time. And speed random sum opt. And that took in, uh, yeah, the wall time here was 1.4 seconds and the user time 9 point, 0.96. Yeah, but the real time is what we care about most, I think. So it, it took 1.4 seconds, this C version to, to run. Okay, so that's the time in C. Um, and I, I'm gonna grab the, Screen share back. Okay, that's the time in C. Now for you, um, all following the course, I have a challenge for you, the first exercise, a first like NumPy warm up, if you will. Can you write a little Python script or just a little cell in a Jupyter notebook or, or anything that uses NumPy that can do this faster then Yoas laptop could do it in C. So to recap, um, the task for you is to use NumPy to generate 100 million random numbers and then add them all together. Um, so a good hint here is not to use Python for loops, um, but use the NumPy functionality to do this. Um, and can you beat uh, the C version? Of course, you will run it on your own laptop uh, or, or own machine, uh, so, so uh, different hardware. We will compare Python versus C on Johan's laptop uh, after the exercise. Um, but as a warm up, I challenge you to do this for yourself. Um, if you find um, you are having trouble uh, writing this, um, then um, that's a good uh, reminder for you to, to, after this lesson, go back to the, the basic NumPy lesson. Please do check out the materials there. Okay, we will give you 10 minutes for this. Um, I'm going to leave the exercise here on the screen. I think it's also on the HackMD, I believe. Um, and I wish you all the best of luck. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, I see in the HackMD that a lot of you uh, managed to actually do this, and a lot of you got really fast times, uh, much faster than the C code. Um, but of course, the, the, the C code was running on Johan's laptop. So to be fair, uh, Johan, could you also run the, the, the Python code on your laptop and race C versus Python um, on the same machine? Yes. So I do it here within uh, a Jupyter Notebook. Import NumPy. And then print. So 
So I'll first just execute it. Yes. See that it's correct. Yes. Okay. So that was correct. Uh, then I copy it and add in the beginning here a time it command. Okay. Well, let's see. Now let's see. So it will now be executed a few times. Four. Seven runs. And uh, one point thirty nine. Oh, okay. That's uh, oh, it's not not so good. It was actually <laughs> more than when I tried it five minutes ago. Um, I guess yeah. it really depends what else is running on your machine. Exactly, because uh, we are not running on a dedicated resource just to run this random number generation, but we have here the operating system and. Perhaps not least, we do have here both on Maridin's computer and on my computer. We have the the Zoom client in order to, to uh, capture the video and sound uh, so that it can be broadcasted on Twitch. And Zoom, as you probably have yes. noticed, many of you can be quite heavy. So Even still, it was faster. Even still, it was faster. Um, we could also, for the sake of comparison, we could see what happens if we execute the Python code, not in Jupyter, but we invoke it from the terminal window. So I switch to a terminal yeah. window. And uh, yeah, okay, we have a few timings. Uh, yeah, so we, we were the... sometimes we were faster already. Yeah, yeah, that, that's right. So I write it again time, Python, speed random sum dot pi. Okay, yeah, one point three. Yeah. yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, but, um... Let, 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 let's continue. We can we can we can play all day with this. Um, the point is that um, well, even like and, and this, this is a clear example. Even with taking the time that Python takes to start into account, um, NumPy is faster than naive C code. Uh, why is that? Well, because Python NumPy doesn't use naive like poorly written C code. NumPy uses really uh, highly optimized uh, C code for this. So as, as Johan already told you, um, NumPy is compiled against a library such as MKL or a library such as uh, BLAS. And these are software libraries. I mean, BLAS stems from like 1979. It's been optimized ever since. It, I mean, this is like over 40 years ago. And uh, MKL is developed by Intel who optimized it especially for Intel processors. So, these libraries implement things like multiple, uh, array multiplication and vector math and things like that. And they've been optimized through and through and through. Um, so, but let, let's have another demonstration of this. For, for example, so uh, this, um, one of the things that uh, BLAS has, for example, uh, BLAS has a dedicated function to compute a vector norm. And, um, the, the point is whenever NumPy has a dedicated function for something, chances are very good that it sort of outsources that to a dedicated BLAS function or like a dedicated function underlying uh, libraries. So even NumPy can be faster than NumPy. Um, so uh, Johan, could you, uh, could you demonstrate this one, for example? So let's, let's make um, sort of a manual version of computing the vector norm. The vector norm is like the length um, of a vector in a, in, a, in a coordinate space, uh, which can use uh, compute using the um, Pythagoras uh, theorem, um, and also demonstrate how that works if we just do it through NumPy, the through the dedicated function. Yes. So at first, I take this code snippet here, yep. and execute it. Uh, this is simply to store away the set of random numbers into the variable a. Now we want them to implement the Pythagorean theorem manually. So start here with the time it command. Then I have a variable l that will be equal to the numpy square root uh, 
and then we go to the summation of all elements of the array. So sum, and it's not the array, but the square of each element in the array. So A star star two. Let's see now. Yeah, we can also have print L. And as before, it will execute a few times so that you get an average. And um, it clocks here to uh, 560 milliseconds in average. And let's see then. Uh, okay. But and what then, if you use the dedicated function? Yeah. Yes, exactly. So yet again, the timer. Using the same variable name, L equal to numpy lin alg is a class and then the norm function yes. so norm here is the, the the standard two norm as you have it in Pythagoras theorem okay let's see oh this is faster, faster. <laughs> <laughs> one can see with a bare eye it's executing many times Yes, and the time it command will sort of dynamically tune how many times it runs, depending on how long it takes. 116 milliseconds. So that's, that's a vast improvement. It's that's a fact, factor of five. Five times faster. Okay. So let that sink in. That's the, 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 the first big takeaway from, uh, from this advanced NumPy course. If you want to write better NumPy code, if you want to write faster NumPy code, one of the best things you can do is study the NumPy documentation, go over, um, sort of try to learn a bit the functions that are there. Um, the more you know of NumPy, what kind of functions are there and using those functions, the faster your code will be. Because if, if there's a dedicated function to do what you want to do, chances are it's much faster than if you implement it yourself. All right. And that is, of course, because it outsources that to like BLOS and MKL and that sort of thing. Okay. That's one way NumPy is fast. Um, let's go to a second way uh, NumPy is fast. And that has to do with data management. So let's uh, well, let, let's also start that, Johan, with, with, with an example. Um, so let us, uh, 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 let's do the transpose example. So let's, let's make a nice big matrix. Let's make like a matrix, 10,000 rows, 20,000 columns. So we have a nice big chunk of data to work with. Yes, so um, I do that in Jupyter. Or maybe this one you can just copy paste. Okay. It's yeah, okay. I, I'll paste the remaining. Copy and paste. Yeah, so this was then creating the matrix A, which is 10,000 by 20,000. And we don't care about the elements here, so we just fill it with random numbers. Then but we yeah, but we care about this nice and big. So this this matrix is 1.6 gigabytes. So this is quite 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 a substantial amount of data. Right? It's not a small matrix. And uh, oh, the transpose. Oh, yeah. Well, be, 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 before you run it, um, so what does the transpose function actually do, uh, Johan? So what what are we doing here? Uh, yes. So, so the 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 transpose uh, for, for the case of a two-dimensional array, then transpose is nothing else than swapping what are rows and what are columns. Yes. But all the time you are playing with the same elements in the array. Yes. So it it it, it transforms your array that rows becomes columns, columns becomes rows. So we might expect that's an awful lot of data to now shuffle about because. Uh, almost every element in this matrix is going to change places with some other element. That's a lot of data that now needs to be shoveled around. Let's time it. How long does it take NumPy to actually do this? Feels like it's taking a long time. 
But yep. that is actually because time it ran it. The time it command ran it 10 million times. This piece. Of oh, code. okay. Yeah. Yeah. And it took 104 nanoseconds in Nanos average. Order of mm. nanoseconds. Mm. It is, right? Even though the matrix is now completely shoveled up, nanoseconds. What's going on here? Um, yeah. What kind of like deep magic is NumPy doing here? That a matrix transpose is basically for free. It doesn't matter how large your array is, how large your matrices are. Transpose is always extremely fast. What's happening here? And if you want to know that, you need to understand how NumPy actually manages memory. Um, this has all to do with memory. So um, let me actually grab the screen again. So um, yeah, so this is transposing. So this is an important image. Look at this for a little while. Um, so even uh, even when when you create a, a two day a two D array in NumPy, say we, we create a matrix in NumPy, um, we index this array saying so. If you want an element from this array, we say to NumPy, okay, I want a row. Give me row number two, uh, and then give me column number three. Right. So we when we want elements, we have two numbers there. But of course, computer memory doesn't really work that way. The, the operating system exposes the memory always as a flat list, a long 1D list of, of, of values. Um, and this is also how NumPy always sees, sees your data. Um, NumPy always sees your data as a flat list. Um, so if you make a matrix, a 2D, uh, 2D array, a matrix, um, NumPy will actually store this like row by row. It, con it concatenates all the rows together into a one big long thing. That is actually what NumPy is operating on. So NumPy sort of is faking this second dimension for me. Whenever you print an array or you, you do some math on it, then NumPy will quickly like pretend that this, this is a 2D thing. But always in the background, all the data, all your data is always a big, long 1D array string. Um, so, and a thing, now uh, uh, a thing that NumPy needs to solve, uh, because this is where the magic comes from. This will become apparent later. Um, a thing that NumPy now needs to solve is say the user wants um, this element, like element on row number two, column number three. NumPy needs internally to translate this into the correct element in its long 1D list. So element 2, comma 3 here, this element is actually in the flattened thing is element number 11. Why? Because um, uh, we first have like the first row. So if we want the second row, so we first have to skip through the first row, skip through the second row, then we're in the correct row. Um, and now we need to correct column. So it's column number 3. So now we need to go all the way there to the column. Yes, that's number 11. That's what NumPy needs to do constantly. Um, and in order to understand that properly, um, I'm calling for, for a second uh, exercise. Um, and at least I want you to give this a try. So it's okay if you don't uh, completely succeed in this, uh, we will continue, but at least try it for a little while. Um, so let's, let's give the, the students 10 minutes uh, again to do this. Um, and your exercise is now this, um, to write a function, uh, and you can call it Ravel, um, and that function will, uh, will translate between uh, a row index and a column index to the proper element in the 1D array. So if I give that function, I want two comma three, that function should give, well, that's, that's, that's element number 11 in my list. If I give that function zero comma zero, that's the first one. Uh, remember Python zero indexed, not one indexed. Um, zero comma zero, that's the very first one, right? Uh, or uh, one comma zero is this one. So that is item number four, see? Take 10 minutes, see if you can solve this problem yourself. So the, yeah, the exercise description is here. Uh, we will be back in 10 minutes uh, with the answer and we'll continue. We'll pick up from there. Yes. All right, good luck. Okay, welcome back everybody. Um, 
it was interesting reading the HackMD. For some people, this was really easy. For others, it was more complicated. The reason why we, we, we gave you this exercise is um, that, that we wanted you to think, like, what does it take to actually do this computation? Um, because then you are in a good headspace to understand how NumPy solves this. So to recap, I, I've opened the solution here. This is the solution uh, to this problem. So if, if you want, for example, if we want row number two and column number three, what we must do is we must like move uh, in the in uh, in this one D array. We need we need to like take steps. If we want to go to the next row, we take a step in that array, and that step is like the number of columns wide, and we take certain steps. And then for the columns, we take a smaller step. That's how you solve this thing. Now, NumPy, of course, doesn't only solve this for the two-dimensional case. NumPy needs to solve this for an arbitrary number of dimensions. You can make a, 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 an array with 200 dimensions and still needs to be able to solve this. So this is how NumPy does it. Every NumPy array, for example, here, I, uh, this is a four by eight array, has a strides parameter. And the strides lists for each dimension. So this is a tuple of two, the strides of this one. Um, because it's a two-dimensional array. Um, and this tuple lists um, for each dimension, how many steps do I need to take in this big, long 1D array to get to the next element along that dimension? So say the first dimension in uh, will be rows. To get to the next row in this array, I need to take 64 steps in the 1D array. And if I want to get to the next column, I need to take eight steps um, into that array. Um, this is a four times eight matrix. So you might wonder now, if you are clever, like why 64, that doesn't add up. Um, if I want to move down one row, I need to skip over eight columns. Um, but that is because this is uh, measured in bytes. Um, so by default, NumPy uh, operates in double precision uh, floating point numbers. And each of those bad boys takes up eight bytes. So each element is eight bytes. So to move to the next row, it's eight times eight, uh, eight, times eight is 64 bytes that we need to skip uh, along in. So that's, so that's how it solves it. And uh, that's NumPy, uh, how NumPy solves this. Okay, why am I telling you all this? Why do you need to know this? You need to know this because now we can solve the mystery of transpose. Let's go back to the question. Why transpose was insanely fast? Why is it so fast? Well, uh, Johan, maybe, maybe you can show what's happening to the to, to the strides parameter, uh, well, not parameter, the, 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 the strides property of the arrays when we transpose something. So maybe uh, the, the the quick one, someone you can really uh, think of the solution. So why do you think? Uh, transpose is fast, try to think about it. And meanwhile, Johan will write the code there or copy paste the code there. Yeah. Um, yeah, so here so we have the strides example. Well, you can run it and see that. Yeah. Yeah, these are the strides. Yeah, and actually we, we had the solution here already in, in the comment here in the code itself. So for a four by eight matrix, the stride was 64 and eight. And then for a five yeah. dimensional, array you have the field with zeros the strides yeah mentioned here yeah. but they come out oh, here okay yeah and, but and what happens by... when we transpose an array so that's that's the yeah. next example so maybe we can bring that in yes so I scroll down this, here yeah this piece of code it just it creates a, a nice big random array it's actually the same one we had before uh, and we transpose it, uh, but now we print. So we print original the strides of the original matrix, and we print the strides of the transpose matrix. Now see what happens. Well, the, the answer is also there. Um, but look at that. Um, huh. Yes, we have the two variable names. A is the original matrix, yeah. and B is, is the transpose. So now you see how NumPy is actually doing this. Um, and it's the same for MATLAB, it's the same for R, it's the same for Julia. MATLAB, uh, of, uh, NumPy, um, can do transpose instantly because all it needs to do is flip the values of the strides. Let's see. 
So now rows becomes columns, columns becomes rows. That's just a trick um, of messing around with these stride values. It's just a trick of messing around how many elements in this big 1D array do I need to traverse to get to the next row? How, how many do I need to go to the next column? So this is why transpose is really, really fast. And now that you know this, you might also be able to guess why the reshape operation is really, really fast. So reshaping, changing the dimensions of a matrix, saying we first have like 20,000 rows and 10,000 columns. Um, also this, uh, if, if we then reshape it to be uh, like, 40,000 times 5,000, you can, you can, you can reshape uh, arrays in, in, in NumPy as long as the number of elements stays the same. Um, you can also see uh, this is implemented by just messing around with the stride. So the big 1D array memory buffer is completely untouched. It's not messed around. Data is not moved at all. The only thing that changes is the strides parameter and the shape parameter of, uh, of an array. Okay. Um, so that brings us to the, to the final point, um, that I want to instill in you. So we've seen transposing super fast. Great. We've seen reshaping very fast because we, we can just do this by messing around with the stride. So if we have an array and we first transpose it and we then reshape it, it should be fast, right? Can you ex execute this bit of code, uh, Johan? Let's, let's, let's try it. It should be fast. This should run instantly. Um, uh, let's see. Well, this, uh, yeah, th this piece of code should run instantly. Um, mm -hmm. Let's see. We have, yeah, we have a big example there. And a yeah, slow. sorry. It was the... Yeah. So, okay, first run uh, the one above this. Yes, exactly. Uh, that one, yeah. Yes. So we create the large array. Yeah. And then first transpose it and then reshape it. Yes, and that's in this composed statement. Yeah. Um, transpose and then reshape. Yes. So it uses here actually a shortcut from transpose. So before we wrote transpo uh, transpose all the way as, as a method call, um, actually, transpo transposing is so fast that uh, NumPy included a shortcut. MATLAB does this as well. Um, you can just write uh, your matrix dot capital letter T. Um, that's short for just give me the transposed version, and it's just it's free. So this takes no time at all to compute. Why is this taking so long, uh, Johan? So transpose should be fast. Reshaping should be fast. Somehow, this is taking an awful lot of time now. Um, yeah. Yeah, NumPy probably... is actually copying over all of our data. It took 39 seconds to do this. Mm. Uh, and this is one of the, the, the things that are not obvious about NumPy, right? Why is that? Well, if you, uh, if you could run the second um, example there. So let's take a look actually. So what, what happens when we transpose a matrix and then reshape a matrix? So yeah, in this so here... example code, we, we create a small matrix so we can actually print them out and, and see what's happening. Yes, exactly. So um, here we have only the elements one, two, three, and four, five, six in a matrix, which is then uh, three by two. Um, let's see. Yeah. What so we get, the original, oh, sorry, the, the original matrix is, is two by three, two rows and three columns. And when we transpose it, you can see you have one, two, three in the first column, four, five, six in the second column. But when we then apply also the reshaping, look here at the elements. It's one, four, two, and five, three, six in the rows. So even though it's the six uh, same elements as we had from the very start, they have been reshuffled. And there is no way that this reshuffling can be done without NumPy copying data in the background. Yes, that's the important part. So the like transposing or other reshaping, yeah, the, the elements have reshuffled, but look, they're now reshuffled in such a way we can't obtain this, this shuffle ordering by cle being clever with the strides. Um, 
it's shuffled too badly now. Um, there's no way to apply a, a shortcut with uh, just modifying strides um, to obtain this. And this is why NumPy, in this case, NumPy had no choice but to actually go over the data and copy over everything. So that's something you need to realize. Now that you know this memory model, the, uh, when you know that, that every array is basically in, in stored in memory as a big 1D list, you can understand why transposing and uh, reshaping is fast sometimes, um, but when you stack them together or uh, when your uh, matrix has been transposed before and saved and it's now in the wrong uh, yeah, wrong order, it's, it's, it's an alternative layout, and then you try to reshape, suddenly uh, it's super, super, super slow. Um, that's one thing. Um, there's one more point I want to uh, give you before we go uh, into the break. Um, there's one other big uh, consequence of this. Another thing that's really fast in NumPy is, is this, is selecting a subset. So say we create a huge array um, and, then, uh, and then only select, for example, the first row or only select some snippet in the middle. This is also super fast in NumPy. NumPy does not need to copy data and you realize why. Um, what NumPy will do is just, it will tweak the shape. It will tweak the strides. Um, it will also apply uh, an offset. That's another parameter that an array has we haven't covered yet, but then also with, with the offset, the strides and the shape, NumPy can just whoop, uh, create what is called a view of this data, but it will not touch the original big uh, data array. But this comes with a caveat. So if you want to save memory, for example, you say, okay, well, we first load in all of my data. Now my memory is almost full. So in order to free up memory and speed this up, I will only select the first row of my array and I will continue my analysis on that. Be mindful, even if you select only first row, this big data array is still a memory. It will not get freed. You will not free up any memory um, actually when you do this. So what, what the situation now becomes this, you will have like your big, memory buffer still, still there. You will now have just multiple views into this memory buffer. Each array is basically a view into the memory buffer um, and different views can share the same memory buffer. Memory will not get freed um, if you do that. Um, another thing to take note of is when you modify data in place. So um, because the memory buffer can be shared between various arrays, um, and it will be shared. Uh, what, if you change the data in one array, um, that data will also be, will have changed in your second array because they share the same memory buffer. So be aware of this. Um, when does NumPy make a copy? When does NumPy just create a view into the same data? It's very relevant. Um, that's fine. Oh, we didn't add it here. Okay. Um, the final thing I should, of course, tell you that uh, arrays ha uh, have a dot copy uh, function attached to them. So if you, at some point, really want to make a copy, and sometimes you want to, um, you can call array.copy, uh, and it will create a new memory buffer for you, a new copy, uh, so there's no surprises there. All right. Um, and now I think you have all deserved uh, a break. Um, and then after the break, we go on to pandas but that's it from us for now and uh, we'll see you in a bit <laughs> 